So I've been working a lot with Windows engineers recently. And the one thing that's coming up is, you know, I want to do some more automation. I want to do some more things like Ansible. Um, but the biggest thing that they're struggling with is they don't want to learn Linux to be able to use Ansible. They just want to use these, you know, modern tools. So in this video, I'm actually going to demonstrate staying on a Windows desktop exactly how they can use Ansible without having to interface with the Linux operating system too much um, and use tools like Visual Studio still to, you know, give them something that's useful to them um, and allow them still to do a lot of automation. So please watch this video. Let me see what you think. Um, and I hope you enjoy it. Thank you. So let's get right in and do that. So there's a few commands. Now you, you can do this via the command line or you can do this via the uh, add remove features we're going to do on the command line just to make things a little bit simpler. Um, but the biggest thing you need to remember is when you are doing things via the command line and doing things like adding and removing features, you need to run as an administrator. So let's go ahead now and do that. So here we have a administrative command prompt. And the first thing we're going to do is run this command. So what this command is uh, allowing us to do is to enable a feature, and that feature is the Microsoft Windows subsystem for Linux. It's going to um, enable all of the uh, features and sub features within that, and it's going to make sure that it doesn't restart. So it's just going to go ahead and enable that feature for us. And then after that, we've got one more feature to enable, which is essentially Hyper-V. So now that has been successful, we just need to go ahead and do the same. But this time we're using the virtual machine platform, which is Hyper-V. And we're doing exactly the same thing. We're enabling the feature, we're enabling all of the features, and then we're making sure it doesn't do a restart. You can see that that has now installed. So now in the Microsoft Store, let's go and search for Ubuntu. So there are lots of different versions. We could install um, 2204, 18, 20. There's a preview down here. Um, let's go ahead and just install um, this version here. We can see here um, it's kind of the, the main one that it draws you to. Um, let's go ahead and install that. Let's go and have a look and see if Ubuntu will now launch. So what this is telling us is that we uh, need to run an update. And running the WSL-update, we'll go and install the Windows subsystem for Linux. And the reason that we're having to do this after installing Ubuntu is that we need a Linux kernel. So we've done our reboot, we've done all of our Windows updates and things like that, and it's saying here, look, look, it requires an update to a kernel component. Now, this is technically true that it needs an update, but it actually needs a kernel component. So we'll see here, it's going to install the Windows subsystem for Linux, that's been installed, um, and then we can close that down. And now let's go and run Ubuntu. So we need to go here and create a user. I'm just going to have one called Toby. And the password that I'm setting. And we have installation successful. So here we have a Linux command prompt. You can see for anyone that's ever used Ubuntu, this is you know what it looks like when you log it um so we can close that we can load up again and get it straight away here um now the great thing is now um if you uh, want to now go and install um something like ansible um we could easily do that so let's uh, do a sudo apt update put in the password that we just set it will go and update all of its repository um, metadata and then instead of you can install Ansible via apt itself but it is an older version 
Um, and then because um, if you want to do things with uh, VMware, for example, um, and you want to use the, you know, the PY VMOMI um, Python module, um, you you fall into some difficulties trying to make sure you're using the right um, Python interpreter to get the right modules in the right place and things like that. So if you just straight out of the box do everything via um, PIP, you could do a virtual environment as well if you really wanted to. Um, I'm not going to do that now. If you install Python 3 PIP, it will go and install Python 3 as well. Obviously, I'm not root, so we can sudo that. So this is going to go and install a load of packages for us. And that's done. So lastly, if we want to go and install PYVMOMI, this will allow us to um, do some things um, with um, a the VMware guest module. There's other VMware modules inside Ansible. But we need this module to be able to do things. Now, if we now go and just pip install Ansible, we will go and get, um, you know, the latest version of Ansible. Now, as we can see here, we get a warning that says um, that all of the binaries are installed in home toby .local bin, which is not a path. You can go and update your path if you really want to um, in Windows to ensure that, you know, that binary folder is included so you don't have to um, actually you know type out the full path I'm just going to demonstrate to you once this is finished installing just that um, Ansible actually runs and we're going to print out our version and there we have it so if I now go uh, into the dot local bin and type Ansible playbook and in fact I'll just do Ansible dash dash version We'll see here that we're running Ansible 2.14.1, um, where all the Python modules are, etc. Thank you for watching that video. I really hope that um, as a Windows engineer, you can see the benefits now of using tools like Ansible and just how easy it is to, you know, install on a Windows operating system. I think there's about five commands that you need to type and you've now got the power of Ansible. Um, please like, subscribe, have a look through my other videos. Let me know if there's other things you would like to see. I'm going to be exploring the Windows ecosystem a lot more now. Um, so thank you very much for watching and um, I'll see you soon.